So the word, the word intention actually comes from a Latin word, just means to stretch, you know, like uh, tensile, tensile strength of a wire to stretch. Um, and in this sense, by setting uh, an intention, we're sort of intentionally um, uh, sort of committing ourselves to, to stretch our boundaries, um, to go be maybe beyond uh, our comfort zone, beyond what's familiar. Um, and the intention is sort of our way of announcing to ourselves and maybe from a larger perspective to life as a whole, um, what, what we want. Um, what's important to us, um, the direction that we choose to devote our time and energy to. So one of the things that we learn, well, especially later in life, is that um, time and energy aren't, aren't unlimited, uh, and we get to choose how we spend those within within our lifetime and so deciding what is important to us and how we choose to devote our time um, is uh, has implications has implications about how we spend our life um, where we um, move how we grow how we learn during this lifetime so one of the ways that uh, intention is often used is um, in terms of uh, goal setting. So we're all familiar with that. It's not the, what, we're, what we'll be addressing tonight, but I, I did want to just talk about it briefly so we can see the difference between what we'll be talking about and what is typically seen as goal setting. So, um, you know, we've all heard that, you know, it's good to set goals and have a plan. And, um, and that's fine, actually, uh, it can be useful in terms of accomplishing useful things in this, uh, in this life, um, you know, in terms of earning a living, um, you know, having a more comfortable lifestyle, um, having a little more predictability in their life. That's, that's all fine. Um, but it is um, a goal-oriented activity where the goal is the key and it, it falls within the framework of, you know, I'll be happy when something happens, something in the future, uh, some event, and, um, you know, when I get there, I'll, I'm willing to devote some time and energy to get there. Um, but when I get there, I, I know I'll be happier than I am now. So the, the converse of that is that um, I've sort of condemned myself to a certain degree to unhappiness until some future event occurs. And the only, the only problem with that is that our life always occurs in the present. And if we sort of relegate our happiness to some future event, we, um, you know, it seems that we never actually arrive. And even if we do arrive, we may find out that what we had hoped would bring us happiness, you know, for that, you know, 10 years of effort, you know, to reach some imagined goal um, may not may not turn out to yield um, the ultimate fulfillment that we had hoped it would. You know, it, I'm guessing that many of us have entered into um, maybe careers or relationships that held all kinds of um, wonderful promise that may, um, for whatever reason, um, not have lived up to those, um, that imagined happiness that we, we entered the activity with. You know. So the, the usual way of thinking of goal setting is that um, I know what the, the goal is. Let, let's just say uh, my goal is to become a lawyer. Well, it, it's pretty straightforward. You know, I've got to go to four years of college. Um, you know, I've got to take my um, 
LSATs and pass those well. Um, I've got to apply to a law school. I've got to go through three years of law school, figure out how to pay for that. And I have to take my law boards and be hired by a law firm and then, then I'll be a lawyer. You know, so that's, a, I don't know, six, seven, eight year journey to reach some goal. But the, the path to that goal is um, pretty clear and the goal is pretty clear. So we can, that kind of goal setting, uh, like I said, can be useful in our, um, the way we normally think about life and growing up and being responsible adults. Um, but I wanted to mention that just to draw the distinction about um, between goal setting and what we'll talk about in terms of um, this, let's say, intention to awaken. So one of the one of the differences there is uh, the just the statement. I in, uh, it's my intention to devote time and energy to uh, spiritually awaken. So right off the bat, there's an issue there. When we're when our goal is to become a lawyer, we know what that looks like. Um, you know, we've we've seen lawyers. We read about them. We know what they do. Uh, it's pretty clear what that endpoint is. It'll be a new experience for us, but it's that endpoint is still clear. In the journey to awaken, the issue is that we don't actually know what awakening is until we realize it for ourselves. We may have read about it, we may have read stories about it, um, but until it actually happens to us, um, we actually don't know what it is. So in some sense, it's, it's like a placeholder. It, it's an imagined um, uh, place. And, and life will use that. Life will use um, our imagination or our um, longing for peace and happiness and you know, eternal bliss and um, you know, special spiritual powers and whatever, whatever we imagine the awakened state is, life will use that to sort of um, pull us along in that direction. It won't, it'll turn out not to be true, but um, life doesn't always play, play fair. <laughs> so this, this uh, journey is, is different because we don't, we don't know, and we can't actually know what what that goal is that we think we're heading towards. It's not that, um, you know, there's some secret teaching somewhere that if you just read the right book or go to the right teacher that they'd be able to, you know, tell you what that end point is. Um, it, it can't, it can't, it simply can't be reduced to words. Um, it can be experienced, it can be lived, it just can't be reduced to concepts. So, um, from the, right from the get-go, the, the goal is at best uh, an imagined idea. And it's fine to, you know, continue to use that wording if it's helpful. Like, um, you know, I'm dedicating myself to um, awaken. That, that's fine. As long as we don't then believe that we know what that is. <laughs> you know, if we just use it as to sort of orient our intention in that moment. The other thing that makes it different is that the path to get to this imagined goal of awakening, that path isn't and can't be prescribed. You know, sure, there can be some directions about, you know, meditating or inquiring or um, you know, contemplating one's life, all of that, all of that can be useful, but it, exactly how it will play out in your own life will be unique. It's not like a, you know, 10 step program to A, B, C, D, E, and you'll get to enlightenment. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, so without a prescribed path, it can feel like, well, I'm not exactly sure where I am on the path. I can't really tell where 
you know, if I'm making progress or not, you know, one day it might feel like, yeah, I think I've, I think I'm onto it now. You know, I'm getting better at meditation. You know, some days I can really feel peaceful and expanded. Um, and then 10 minutes later, we might find ourselves in, um, you know, a, a contracted state, um, mind racing, um, you know, fully caught in our conditioning. You know, so it's not a, it's not a ever increasing smooth path to where we become more and more peaceful and tranquil. And then one day we're really, really tranquil and we call that awakening. It's not, it's not really that path of accumulation in, in a very real sense. It's really the opposite where um, things that we believed were true are being um, subtracted, being carved away, sometimes against our will, right? They can feel uncomfortable that way. Um, when things that we dearly believed were, were true are exposed as being maybe partially true, true under some circumstances, but when we are in the in hot pursuit of, let's call it truth, um, sometimes um, everything is, is up for question. Everything needs to be um, examined to see whether it is always true or just sometimes true, whether it's um, absolutely true under all circumstances, um, whether it's not subject to comings and goings, it's not subject to our memory recalling it into existence. It's what's true, what's always true. So when we're, when we're in search of that, anything that's not that gets called in question. And when uh, things are called into question and examined, um, it is really only our intention to keep going um, that gives us the strength to move, move through that. Because sometimes um, this journey is difficult. You know, it's not, it's not just all about peace and love. It is about um, discovering what this life is truly about. So this path isn't, isn't a known progression. Sometimes it feels like we can um, be wandering, not sure exactly where we are. Um, doesn't really help to sort of compare ourselves to some other person to decide, you know, who's further down the path or not, or they've had this experience, but I haven't, Does it, you know, and then we interpret what that may mean. Um, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with years on the path. You know, it doesn't actually have anything to do with having had this experience or that experience. We may have um, beautiful, instructive, mind-blowing spiritual experiences. And like all other experiences, they will come and they will go. Maybe in a few minutes, maybe in an hour or two, maybe in a day or two, maybe in a month or two. But they will, all experiences have a lifespan. And so what we're talking about, if we are indeed in the search of truth, truth is what doesn't come and go, what isn't sub subject to time and space and our memory and our believing in it. It's what's true. So sometimes this, this movement, this intention um, is the only thing that keeps us moving forward. So this intention is something that where we set a direction, um, where we um, rely on our, you could say attributes, personal attributes, um, like mm, honesty with oneself, um, 
curiosity, some courageousness helps, willingness, perseverance, things like that. So it's not a goal-oriented journey simply because we can't know what that ultimate goal is. Um, all we can do to sort of keep our bearings, keep moving forward is uh, being true to um, those kind of attributes in ourself. And Mr. Gadada calls that earnestness. Earnestness is what carries us. So it's not, it's not an agenda. It's not, you know, imagining a future state, um, you know, imagining, you know, trying to reach what we think of as God or enlightenment. Um, it's really staying true to ourselves and pursuing that wherever it leads. And sometimes where it leads is difficult because one of the things that um, this journey will include at some point is really looking at um, whatever, whatever shadow um, still remains, being willing to look at that. Sort of like in the old um, cathedrals in Europe or you know, ev even more so in, in Tibetan Buddhist temples, they, they have these really scary um, figures at the entrance to the temples, gargoyles. You know, it's almost like you have to pass through that to enter the sanctuary. W be willing to face your own um, fears, face, um, you know, those thoughts that can get caught up into, you know, a runaway momentum of, um, you know, believing old stories, being willing to pass through that uh, to get to the, it's called the inner sanctuary. Right? <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, these old cathedrals want, want to be upfront about it, you know, and this isn't necessarily just um, all peace and bliss, it's actually um, can be challenging work sometimes. But this, this movement forward, it's, it's like we have these, we can, the only thing that we really have to rely on are these sort of inner qualities and a, a curiosity and a, a determination to find out what is most important for us, right? And it's not that, you know, awakening has to be what's most important for you. You know, we all get to choose what's most important. You know, how we, how we want to spend our time and energy. What, to what do we want to devote our life to? Not that we can't enjoy other things, but primarily, how are we going to spend our time and energy? And it's easy to see what we are devoted to now. We can just look at how we spend our time. You know, if we, if we say to our friends that, um, you know, what I, my intention is to awaken, but, you know, nearly all of my time and energy is, I don't know, spent on political drama on the internet, um, then, you know, maybe there's something that's not fully in alignment there. And that's fine. We can see that. We can look at it and we can decide, that, well, maybe that's what I, I really want to do is to be involved in, um, you know, social justice. And that's fine. Everybody gets a, a choice about what they want most to be um, devoted to. Um, Jed McKenna has an interesting um, statement. Um, he says, you know, discover the depth of anything and you will discover the depth of everything. You know, your job is to find a place and start digging. <laughs> In other words, any, any place, anything that we decide is, is most important. You know, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's taking care of our children, maybe it's a career, maybe it's music, maybe it's art, maybe it's um, 
gardening, maybe it's meditation, who, who knows? It's everybody gets to choose. But whatever it is, when we take it to its fullest depth, um, since it's all one, um, that can be discovered anywhere, if we go deeply enough. So Adi Ashanti says that, you know, if we're looking for water, um, it's much better to dig one 100 foot well than to dig a hundred wells one foot deep. You know, we may need to test a few things, look here and there before we find something that really catches our um, curiosity, catches our uh, energy to the point that we can feel uh, that it's our intention to move more and more fully down that path, not because we should or ought to, or it's the right thing to do, but because, you know, we just almost can't help ourselves. You know, we, we just have to find out what's deeper. We have to explore that. Um, and that's, that's the energy. That's this longing in our heart to find out what's really most important for us. And what's, what's most important may not stay the same thing over the course of a lifetime. You might explore something um, uh, deeply and then that intention may shift to a different direction. There's no, there's no error here. <laughs> it's not like, um, you know, we, we can postpone that journey, but everything takes us further. If we're paying attention and has, brings some energy and devotion to it, it, it speeds up the process. But we're, wherever we move, where we're following that, those inner um, attributes, I've been calling them tonight, um, just a sense of, um, you know, willingness to explore, willingness to experience, um, you know, a heartfelt desire, a curiosity, you know, just a sense of, well, I, I, just, I just have to know what's down that path. And um, we find ourselves going. But this, this idea of journeying um, without really knowing what this end point is, that, that pulling us forward um, is, is what I'm calling intention tonight. Um, so it's a little bit like, you know, if you're walking in, um, down a path in a forest, you've never been down that path before, it's not well traveled, it's getting dusk and you're alone and you're walking down that path, um, you will be alert. There'll be a sense of aliveness happening. You don't know what's around the next bend in the path. You don't know what animals might be seen. Friendly ones are not so much friendly. You know, we're alert, we're alive. You know, if we contrast that between sort of walking down a well-trodden path, well-defined, um, you know, maybe in a city park, um, lots of people have walked down that path. We've walked down it many times. Um, we can be on that path and be thinking about something totally unrelated to where we happen to be at the moment. You know, in a sense, we can just sort of go, go to sleep. We know what's there not expecting any surprises. So the walking down the, the unknown path is, there's a sense of aliveness there. There's a sense of adventure. Um, it's not like, you know, we're just trying to get to the other side of the park. We're um, experiencing every step along the way in this um, forest that we um, aren't completely familiar with. And that's sort of the, the joy of this um, intention to move in a direction without knowing exactly where we're going. Um, it's, not, it's not aimless, but it's also not goal-oriented. It's, it's moving from um, our deepest desire rather than from an agenda. 
So there's a, there's a couple of things that can throw us off this path. One is uh, if we choose um, comfort over truth. You know, it, where we get to a point where um, there's, you know, just inconvenient to, I don't know, sit down and meditate that evening. Um, I'd rather go to a movie. Um, you know, coming back to the word intention is like, well, I intended to meditate, but there was a really good movie on, so I went to the movies. And again, movies are fine, no problem. Um, you know, except if that becomes a pattern, you know, that where we choose, um, you know, just eat, drink, and be merry, and, you know, forget about tomorrow. So sometimes this, um, we can choose it internally where we uh, just uh, choose to um, focus on, you know, blissful thoughts, blissful experiences, seeking spiritual states, you know, at the expense of being willing to uh, explore uh, things that are causing us uh, to suffer, um, you know, through believing a particular thought or not being willing to forgive or holding on to judgment. Um, if, we're, if we're reluctant to, to work our way through those more challenging things, um, they will always hold us back. They, they will always pull our energy back to that. Um, and the freedom is not to bypass um, those, let's say, shadow parts of ourselves. It's really to face them. What, what gives those shadow parts of ourselves power is uh, by running away from them. As long as we're running away from them, they're chasing us. You know, what, what turns the tables is to turn around, face those challenges without judgment, without blame, without self blame, but just seeing them for what they are. Um, that willingness to see them is what releases them. It's the running away that gives them the power makes them seem bigger. Uh, the other thing uh, that can sort of throw us off track is to um, decide, well, we've, I've gone that for, as far as I'd like down that path. That's fine, we can choose to do that. Um, but there can be a temptation of thinking, okay, I've, I've sort of, uh, know how to meditate. You know, when I do, it has a physiological benefit, quiets my mind, quiets my body, it feels good, and um, relaxes me, and um, puts me back into shape so I can go back into the fray the next day and be out in the world again. So we're, you know, if we're just using meditation like that as a medication almost, you know, I'll take my I take my dose of medicine that night and then I'll, I'll be good the next day. That's fine. Um, but if we really want to pursue um, this journey as, you know, to its realization, um, we uh, don't have the luxury to um, rest too long at any particular point along the way. There, there needs to be a willingness to um, be grateful for what we've realized and also have a willingness to go further. Because there can be a tendency of thinking, ah, finally, you know, I've got, this feels good, I'm just gonna hang out here. Um, you know, it's just a little lethargy, you know, so we, there has to be a continuing willingness to go further until we've seen through, seen through the whole thing, you know, see, seen through the whole structure of conditioning, the whole structure of conceptual thought, um, where that, those layers are, are removed from uh, our belief in them. Thoughts may still arise, conditioning may still arise, um, but we no longer believe that that is what I am. It may still happen, these bodies are conditioned, but we don't believe that that's fundamentally what we are. We're not other than that, but we're not only that. So 
So that willingness to go ever, ever further. So in um, Buddhism, they talk about, um, you know, it's rare, very rare to be, have the good fortune to be born a human. It's even more rare to have the good fortune in this lifetime to hear um, about the possibility of liberation from this cycle of pleasure and pain. And it's even more rare to have heard about that possibility and chosen to pursue that. You know, because we can hear about it and say, well, you know, it's possible, but it's, you know, how do I know it's, it's certain? Well, you don't, <laughs> you don't. Even it doesn't matter who said it is, you know, if you don't know it for yourself, it's, it's not certain, it's a possibility. You know, so the question is, is that possibility worth enough to devote your time and energy um, to finding out if it's actually true? for yourself. You know, and we may decide that, no, it's actually not. I'd, I'd rather just have a good time until, um, you know, as long as the, you know, until the time runs out and, um, you know, rather than bet what time I have in this life on this planet to finding out whether this possibility of realization of, um, recognizing a deep uh, sense of belonging at homeness, um, transcendent of fear, whether that's worth it or not. And we all get to choose. <laughs> we all get to choose. There's, and there's no right answer. So this intention is um, the direction that we, let's say, make some commitment to. It's not, it's not a light thing as we're talking about it. It's not like saying, well, you know, I, you know, intended to do my homework, but then, you know, my friends came over. You know, it's not, it's not something light like that. It's something that is related to what we believe the most important thing in our life is and whether um, we choose to take on the intention to move in that direction. And, it's, and it is unknown. It's, we don't know what the steps are. We don't know even if we're making progress. We don't know if, um, we just don't know. And that's, uh, we can, take that as a negative thing, or we could take it as, you know, the, the adventure of it, you know, the excitement of it, the aliveness of it. You know, if it's just step by step, I know, you know, these, you know, 10 steps to get to be a lawyer. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, you know, we, we imagine that the payoffs at the end of the line, in between now and then, it's just sort of, you know, a lot of just grinding out. Um, the steps that we have to go through. This is different. This is just that sense of aliveness, adventure. We don't know um, how it will play out. We don't know exactly where we're going. <laughs> but there is, there is something that moves us in that direction. And I, I suggest that what's actually moving us is, um, is life itself. Life itself seeking to know itself through you. It's a source seeking to know itself through you. That, that sense of, of longing, we take it to be a personal thing, but um, that movement, I believe, comes from a much deeper place to move us in um, that, along this journey. There's a... Um, uh, Medieval uh, Spanish 
um, monk named uh, St. John of the Cross, um, who wrote, and one of, one of the sayings that I, I really like, it's, it's, it's talking about this movement. Um, it compares it to walking um, in the garden at night um, with nothing to show my way other than the longing in my heart. I love that image. <laughs> nothing to guide me other than the longing in my heart. So that's the opportunity, that's the gift of this intention, this movement um, in a direction um, that, we, that, we, that we don't know, that we can't know. And yet something is pulling us forward, something, something feels um, deeply important to us to move us in that direction, whatever, whatever that happens to be. So the fact that we're all listening to a talk like this tonight um, indicates to me that, that that gift of intention has been received. And our job is to nurture it. <laughs>